Another thing you might want to do is some hand strengthening exercises. Now, I want to talk about this. Depending on how old you are and how uh, what kind of shape your hands are in, this becomes really important. I've always really pushed these uh, open and closing your hands and building up to 300 and you know tight fist and open your hand all the way. That served me well. But then I started having, well, I've had some carpal tunnel on and off throughout the years. Uh, I got trigger finger once in my left thumb from doing an art project, from holding a foam board down while I was using a straight edge. It flared back up a little over a year ago, the carpal tunnel and trigger finger in both hands from being on my computer nonstop. Uh, I downsized, came off the road from constant touring, so I wasn't playing every single day and out on the road. Uh, started doing a lot of stuff in the studio and on my website. Uh, you know, had this crunch of three or four months doing a bunch of stuff on my computer for new promotions coming out. Next thing I know, I had injured myself again. So I went and saw a hand uh, specialist, and he... Uh, gave me a shot of cortisone in each thumb. You can only have three total in your life, and I'd had two in this one before years ago. Uh, so he, you know, that's a limited fix, and it's a really good Band-Aid in that it can uh, reduce the inflammation enough to allow you to heal. And uh, so if you've ever been faced with that, um, find a good specialist work with the physical therapist because what they told me to do was very counterintuitive. Uh, I was overcompensating, feeling like I needed strength. And I, and I told her, I said, you don't understand. I really play. And she just, after about my third visit, uh, I pulled out my iPhone and I said, look, I'm really playing this thing. I can't just not have strength. She goes, Kelly, you're hurting yourself. So, I will still do these, opening and closing my hands, those isometrics, but not as aggressive. So listen to your body, listen to your hands. Also, training myself to just touch lightly. Plus, picking things up without grabbing them, but just like I can pick this up. I don't have to grab this and pick it up. Um, like when I go to pick up my guitar case, I just pick it up. I don't grab my handle and pick it up. So, and when I open a doorknob, I open the doorknob. I don't, ah, uh, my autofocus. <laughs> uh, I don't grab the doorknob and, you know, I've had to retrain myself. So depending on, you know, a lot of times people will see my finger exercises, or I'm sorry, my hand exercises online. They'll contact me. Uh, people will ask me about carpal tunnel because it's a real common syndrome whether you play guitar or not. It's something that being on the computer, being on our phones all the time, uh, it, it's a very common injury that, that we're doing to ourselves. And uh, we don't necessarily know how to overcome it. So, and I have a whole series on this, you know, where there's some stretches, drop, drop your shoulder, um, let me put this on a different camera angle. Drop, I drop my shoulder. I'm stretching my hand back that way and this way, that way and this way. Doing that with both of my hands. But dropping your shoulder when you do that. Good, I mean, stability and hand strength you're gonna get from doing these finger exercises but you're also going to get just don't make such a tight fist open your hand all the way always listen to your body play frequently you know i'd rather see a student play you know for 20 minutes uh every day or for 20 minutes three or four times a day four or five times a week uh, than just on saturday afternoons try to play for five hours and then get frustrated you know um so make sure, and that's one thing, just grab your guitar, run your finger exercises. I don't have anything to do. I'm waiting on my coffee to brew. Okay, you know, or 
waiting for somebody to call me back. Okay. Or decided to go down the rabbit hole on YouTube and watch a documentary or, you know, whatever it is that we do on YouTube for 70 or 80 hours. Where did they go? <laughs> you practice your guitar while you're watching it. Um, Netflix, what, whatever it is that you do, you can do some of these exercises. They're no brainers. Okay. Uh, and then one other thing that you can do is with your thumb, not touching the back of the neck of your guitar, doing your finger exercises like that. Let me put it over here on this one. See my thumbs down here. When you do that, it forces your hands into position. You know, you can't mess around and be too far away from the fret and, and you have to leverage your body to, you know, pull in. So that's another thing that also builds strength. Okay. In general, approaching your guitar, tune your guitar before you play. Um, turn a metronome on and do your quarter notes, quarter notes and eighth notes. And depending on where you are in your, in your learning and comfortability, quarter note, eighth notes, and 16th notes. Master finger exercise number one with down picks, then number two, then number three. Then start working on alternating picks. Practice with a metronome. Do some hand exercises. Don't overstretch ever. Stretching is good, but don't overstretch. Watch how you're grabbing things just in general for longevity of hand health. Um, I do yoga every day. I drink three glasses. I just fill up three mason jars every day and drink them. I do drink too much coffee. You know, I don't. I have I've been sober for eleven years, so it's coffee and water. That's it. And um, walk. You know, get um, literally. Uh, I do a. I play the hand pan. And I do a lot of meditation and healing music, and I and I play a lot of hand pan gigs for yoga class. I do a. a healing music with the yoga instructor and I do the broadcast uh, out of my studio here. Sometimes we'll do three or four classes a week. And then I play for the arts and healing uh, uh, program through the Cincinnati Arts Association. And so I do a lot of hand pan. And uh, one of the things that the, the lady who's a uh, nurse practitioner always says during class is that motion is lotion. And that's very, very true. Get out and take a walk. Get up away from your computer. Get out and take a walk. Uh, also, sometimes people will say, should I ever practice standing up? Strap on your guitar and walk around the, the house and, and play. Don't just maybe necessarily get up and stand. Uh, you can, you know, but but make sure you're moving, okay? Because in, in the God, 30 years that I toured nonstop, it was a physical job. And every decade, I had to really do a reset and get more and more healthy because I started out, you know, I was a wild child. So we want to take care of ourselves, okay, because guitar is a very physical instrument. And when you're playing, you want to make sure that you get in position to where you can reach whatever it is that you're playing. People tend to want to sit how they're sitting, be really stiff, and, oh, they can't reach things. And they think that, oh, I can't do this. It's like, you know, if... Uh, I threw, if I wadded up a $100 bill and threw it at you and made it a little out of reach, boy, you'd get that. <laughs> so, you know, wherever this is, you know, drop your shoulder, get your, your elbow down, get underneath the guitar to do some of these things, okay? Make sure that the way you're sitting isn't inhibiting anything that you're doing, all right? So I just wanted to share these things because I find that these are little things that uh, can be a mystery. You know, a lot of people like... Tell me about the rhythm exercises. Tell me how you hold your hand. Uh, you know, when I watch them try to play their rhythm exercise, they're not, you know, it, it's, it's not translating what I've 
put out there to, you know, here's how you do it. And I guess there hasn't been enough information for some people that it's really new to. Um, again, I grew up playing piano, playing music. A lot of the stuff just became second nature because I always did it. Um, so, you know, I just want to make sure that everybody, whatever level you're at, um, and some people are raised in musical families, some people aren't. So when are you jumping on the guitar train? What is your background? You know, do you have much musical background? Um, it's not a one size fits all. This is how to play the guitar. It's like, wait a minute, this is music. What do we know about music? What do we know about rhythm? What do we know about feel? How healthy are our hands? How strong are we? Uh, I'm a female. I'm not as strong as guys. My style is different. I have to overcompensate in some ways. So we're all very different. You know, um, some people have long fingers. Some people have short stubby fingers. Uh, you know, I, we're all different. You know, some people are, are tall and thin and, and, and long waisted. Some people are not, they're heavier. They're maybe more short waisted. So how do we sit? There's not a one size fits all for any of this, but there are a one size fits all generalizations, you know, at least from each teacher, how I teach things will be, you know, what has worked for me. And all I can do is share with you what has worked for me and the path that I've been on. So steal everything that you can from me. And if there's some things that don't fit or, um, you know, you've gone as far as you can go, well, there's a million guitar players out there or guitar teachers. So always make sure that, um, that you take everything in the context in which it was delivered, okay? Uh, just one thing, uh, one final thing. You must hold your pick with these two fingers. Keep your hand open. Well, Eric Clapton and, and, and Eddie Van Halen held their pick with these two fingers. and They did pretty well for themselves, <laughs> okay? So, you know, there's exceptions to every rule. So practice hard. Make sure you're warming up. And you can do a warm-up. If you get these finger exercises down, you can run through one of them in five minutes. Uh, if you really get them down, you can run through all of them, you know, do all three of them every day and, uh, and incorporate your rhythm exercise kind of into the, the pulse of the, of the exercises that you're playing where you don't have to sit and do your rhythm exercise a lot, except you do want to get used to holding onto this pick and loosening up your right hand. So that's where you would start doing these rhythm exercises for a different rhythm, reason, okay? Um, but you want to create a pulse, and you want to feel it in your body. You're the one playing. And so um, I'll leave you with this. If I'm playing Hey Joe... much I'm leaving out but as long as I'm moving you hear the song it keeps going but if I was I, it doesn't work that way we've got to kind of ride this guitar you know and and we're creating music we're moving energy um, if I feel it you will feel it if I don't feel it you won't. So we want to make people feel. Okay, so we want to get comfortable enough on our guitar to where we can execute what we're trying to do and uh, do it with precision but with feel. I'd rather hear a wrong note in time because then you can just play the next note any direction. If you do it in time, people don't necessarily know you just did anything wrong. But if you play a right note out of time, there's, <laughs> it's hard to fix that. And people feel that, you know, um, anytime you play, anytime you make a mistake, keep going, plow right through it. Like you meant it. Uh, sometimes repeat it like you really meant it, you know, and then it'll kind of 
get erased from people's wonder what that was subconscious okay all right i'm gonna stop here peace practice hard and remember what you practice is how you develop the skills that you need to go play so if you're spending all your time playing with just a little bit of practice you're putting the cart before the horse it will take 10 times as long break it down practice it get these things in your dna and you will have the what will seem like talent you'll have the skills developed to now go play anything but if you're trying to learn individual songs which a lot of teachers do they teach the student well i want to learn these songs so they teach them to them and i don't do a lot of that i make sure we're learning uh, templates and foundational stuff and skills and techniques so my job is so you don't need me you know running around trying to teach you every single song you ever wanted to learn well that's great but i'd rather teach you how to play so you can go play any song you want to play so you have the ability to learn it yeah i'll teach as much as i can that people want to play but i don't go around trying to make everybody happy by teaching them every song they ever wanted to play I want to get them playing a guitar so they can do that on their own and so they can learn how to learn, okay? All right, take care.